my miracles how are you doing today it is another episode of coffee and crime so grab your coffee and let's talk some crime I have my notes here so I will be looking down occasionally this is a crime that is very well known it is still in some people's opinion unsolved let's go ahead and jump right into it on May 5th, 1993, three eight-year-old boys, Steve Branch, Michael Moore, and Christopher Byers, were reported missing by John Byers, Christopher's adoptive father. They were last seen around 6.30 together. As usual, they were always together. Uh, they rode bikes, just did a lot of boy things. So since the time of day which was the evening came around the nightfall hindered the search the following day around 1 45 found the children's bodies where the bodies were located was a very large wooded area called robin hood hills woods i will not be showing any of the crime scene footage or photos because it is very disturbing and also out of respect for the family members. All three boys were found naked and hogtied. Their clothes were also found, except for one pair of one of the boys' underwear, which was never recovered. Um, I'm going to skim over some of the details of the crime and just say that all three boys were mutilated. They had bite marks, they had multiple injuries. It seemed like Christopher Byers had more attention to him. The other two boys were found with multiple injuries, but also were found drowned. So who did this horrendous crime? There were suspects towards the beginning of the investigation that just really never panned out. There was a black male that came into a restaurant and he was sort of incoherent he had blood on his hands he went into the ladies restroom the cops were called but really no investigation came about with that there were two other men that were suspected but just nothing ever panned out damian eccles was 18 jason baldwin was 16 and jesse miss kelly jr was age 17. Now, Jesse Miss Kelly Jr. had some mental problems. He was the one that quote unquote confessed that all three of them were there and they did the crime. When the cops were interviewing him and asking him questions, he would answer almost everything wrong. Then the cops would say, oh, well, that's not right. This is what happened, right? And he would agree. Um, unfortunately, they were all three were not tried together due to this fact. So Jesse Miss Kelly had his own trial and then Jason Baldwin and Damien Eccles were tried together. The conclusion of the trial wound up being Damien Eccles was given the death penalty. Jason Baldwin and um, Jesse Miss Kelly were given a life in prison. How did this come about that they suspected these teenagers? Um, Jason Baldwin and Damien Eccles did have previous arrest records of vandalism and shoplifting. Jesse Miss Kelly was known to have a temper and was known to fight quite often. They all had similar tastes. They liked heavy metal music. They all wore black or dark clothing. And they had long hair. So I think... It was, they were seen to be rebels, bad boys, and people were talking about satanic rituals and demonic undertones in the trial. Do I honestly believe that these three teenagers did this, this horrendous crime? No, I don't. I don't think the system got it right. There was no DNA on the boys around the boys um it there was just no evidence and i think they just judged these innocent teenagers because of the way they looked acted everything 
So fast forward in 2011, all three entered an Alford plea deal. What does that mean? They all basically pled guilty, but still pronounced their innocence. And they are free to this day. Now, my thoughts on this case, as I said in the beginning, the first, the first episode, this is my personal opinion. I'm not an FBI investigator. I don't, I'm not a professional, but I want to share with you some things that really stuck out to me and my opinion on who did this. There could have been more than one killer, but I do believe there was only one killer. Who do I believe that is, I think it's Christopher Byers' adoptive father, John Byers. And I listed some some things that really stuck out to me throughout the documentaries. There's actually in three HBO documentaries, Paradise Lost, one, two, and three. They're very informative. They're over two hours long. And that's really where I kind of form my opinion. Um, I did a lot on Wikipedia. I did some on YouTube. And there are, let's see, two other documentaries. Uh, 48 Hours did an episode on the Memphis Three. And then the documentary that I personally have is called West Memphis Three. So here are the things that stuck out to me with Mr. Byers. He visited the crime scene. That to me is very odd. I would, I just would not want to just visit my child's crime scene. Then you fast forward five years later, he went back to the crime scene, which was overgrown. And he, the documentary crew went with him. He took a shovel, some sawdust, and what wound up being crime scene tape that was taped up when the bodies were found. And you always look at the, the true crime stories and a lot of the criminals or murderers would will take souvenirs. Now, one of the boys' pairs of underwear was never recovered. And then now you see Mr. Byers has this crime scene tape. I wouldn't want any anything coming from the crime scene. That's just my personal opinion. So when he went into the woods five years later, he lit, lit this section on fire and pretended to bury the teenagers, he thought, and accused of killing his babies. He held the crime scene tape up and said, this was put up when my babies were out here, were found here. And these were not your babies. These were not your children. Christopher Byers was an adoptive child to you. So that stuck out to me. Um, just his behavior throughout the documentary, it was always about me, me, me. He always quoted Bible scriptures. It just was very unsettling to me to watch him. Um, now, did his relationship with his adoptive son, Christopher, was that... Was that a good relationship? We don't know. Um, he claimed that he disciplined Christopher, but he didn't say, well, I spanked him. I punished him. And that's just kind of a weird set. That's just a weird word to use. He has dentures now. During the trial, well, before the trial and during the trial, he did not have dentures. He had his regular teeth. And he was constantly asked to provide dental records due to the fact that all three boys had bite marks. He never did it. Now he has dentures, can't prove anything. Christopher's mother, Melissa, who was married to Mr. Byers, suspiciously died. Um, let's see, when did she die? She suspiciously died March 1996. It was undetermined. He claimed that she committed suicide because of the loss of her child, which is understandable. But in my, what I would want to know is, did she know something? Did he wait a few years and then kind of set up this scene to make it look like she committed suicide because her heart was broken? We'll never know. 
Um, in one of the Paradise Lost documentaries, he went to his wife's grave, had a picture of him and her, and whoa, he was, he was basically just, woe is me, why did you have to leave me? Um, he would quote some scripture. So in the documentary Paradise Lost 2 Revelations, he said that his wife didn't want to live and she was addicted to pills. And throughout the, all of these documentaries, people just wanted him to take a polygraph test. He took a polygraph test. And the one thing that stood out to me was the administrator asked if he had any any problems with the law he said quote nothing major i got a dwi after my wife was murdered that's a strange sentence when you c continuously say that she committed suicide and then she's murdered hmm after the three now men were released, he completely did a 180 and said, oh, yes, they were wrongly convicted. After all of this time saying burn in hell and you killed my babies, he just completely said, oh, they were innocent. Then when the attention started coming to him, he accused Terry Hobbs, which is Steve Branch's stepfather, of doing the killing. So what is my opinion on this horrible, horrible crime? I believe Mr. Byers is the killer. I have a gut feeling. Will this ever, will he ever be investigated to the full extent of the law? Will this crime be solved? I have no control over that. But I do believe that he is the murderer. What do you guys think? Have you heard of this crime? If not, if you do research like I do, comment down below. I really, really want to know your opinion on this case. I hope you guys enjoyed this second episode. I love you. Click that subscribe button. Watch a miracle happen. I am Miracle Girl. Click the notification bell. Like this video. And I will see you guys later. I love you so much. Thank you for another episode of Coffee and Crime. Bye.